So the Blender physics system is a great way to create uh, kind of these interesting uh, physics simulations. And you can create some pretty cool things with it. And we're just going to be using the rigid body physics because it's simple, it's very versatile, and it's easy to use. So let's open up Blender. Uh, we'll just obviously delete the center cube as usual. And we'll start off by adding a plane or like, kind of like a ground that everything can interact with and use as something to fall onto and sit on. So we'll create our plane by going to uh, add down here, mesh, plane. Once you click on that, you get a plane in the center here. And we'll move over to the left and scale it up by clicking the scale button and moving our mouse to the left until we get it, I'd say, about the size of the grid would be fine for us. Now we want to make this into a ground plane, something that things can collide with. So we'll go over to our tab over here make that a little bit bigger just so we can get over here to the physics tab make sure we're selected by pressing A on the keyboard and then moving your mouse over to the plane and clicking the right mouse button to select it then we we'll go over here and click on rigid body and we're gonna go down to where it says rigid body and click this right here and change it to passive so that way it doesn't move but things can hit it so again we'll press A on the keyboard to deselect everything and now we have our ground excuse me um, we're gonna add something, you know, we'll create dominoes, like just kind of a domino simulation. Maybe we could stack them up later on or something. So we need to model our dominoes. So we're gonna go to add and add a cube. Move this up by dragging that. And we're now this isn't really a domino shape. So we'll change that. Now you can zoom in using the mouse wheel, obviously. And then if you hold shift and hold down the mouse wheel and move your mouse around, you can pan the camera. So we'll pan it so it's nice centered on the cube. And you can move it around by holding the center mouse button, the mouse wheel, and moving the mouse, just as a side note. Now, I'm going to go down here to this, uh, this drop-down menu and click on that and select Edit Mode. And again, we're going to press A on the keyboard to deselect everything. Now we're going to go down here and, and click on the Face Select Mode so we can select faces. And you select the face you want to drag with the right mouse button, the right mouse button, Select this face, click on the green arrow, we'll move it in, give it kind of a flattish shape like that. And then we'll click on this face over here, move that in to make it rectangular. That looks like a pretty nice domino right there. Once you're done, you can go back down here and go back into object mode. Now you can see the center of the object is all messed up. It's not really where it should be. So we'll go over here and click on set origin and origin to geometry. That is going to set the origin to the center point of all the faces the average center point of all the faces. So now that's good. So now all we need to do is uh, again make this physics enabled. So again we'll click rigid body and leave it as active. Now that's all good. So we have one domino. Now we can set that down on the face if we want. Kind of close to it. We don't want it going through it. Now an easy way to do this is press 5 on the keyboard to go to orthographic view and then 3 on the keyboard. On the number pad I mean. And this is our ground plane. You can move it nice close to it. A little bit of gap left. Now we press 5 again on the keyboard, number pad, and it's good. Now we can move this to where we want to. I'm going to move it to the edge here. Now we don't just want one domino, that would be boring. So we're going to go over here to this little wrench, which is the modifiers tab. We're going to add a modifier. We're going to add an array. What that's going to do is create a pattern of them, or make multiple of them. Now we want to go over here to then make this zero. Hit enter. And we want to make the relative offset. We're going to click this and we're going to drag it a little bit until it's a little bit in front of that. I think that distance looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more. And now we don't just want one. So we'll go up here to the count and add a few. I think that should be fine. Now we have a few dominoes. We can click apply. Now we can't have this all as just one domino that would be stupid. They would all fall over as once and these would go through the ground. If we play we can see that. You see you kind of turn a little bit. It's a little bit messed up. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure these are all selected. We're going to go into edit mode. Now we're going to press A on the keyboard twice. A to deselect and then A again to select all of them. Then we're going to hit P on the keyboard and we're going to go down here and click on by loose parts. That's going to make each of these an individual domino. So now we can go back down here and go into object mode. Now we need to set the origins to these, to the geometry, or else if you see right here, these will all like weirdly fall over. Hold on, I got a backspace. 
these all weirdly kind of like tip over and fly that way because the origins are all messed up. So we're going to click that again. I'm going to go over here to set origin, set origin to, to geometry. Now if we reset our simulation and play it, they all stand up like dominoes should. So now we're going to deselect everything. And we need to add something that's going to hit these dominoes and like move them over. So we're going to add another object. I'm going to add a cube. This is far too big, so we're going to scale this down. Should be fine. Now we want to move it to the center of these dominoes. And then move it up to where we were going to want to hit the dominoes. And we'll move it over to the left here. So that way we can animate it so it comes over and hits this domino. Now we need to add a keyframe. Oh, first we need to set the, uh, the physics. So we'll go back over to our physics tab and click on rigid body again. We will do active, dynamic, and we're going to click animated. This will allow us to animate keyframes for it. We'll pan our view over here. Now we want to create keyframes for this. So we're going to go over to the objects tab. And we're going to right click on the entire thing right here and select insert keyframes. Make sure you're on frame zero for this, for location. Now we're going to go over to frame 20 or so. That should be fine. And we're going to move this over to right here. So it'll move over and hit that domino. And then we're going to click again, insert keyframes. So now you can see it moves this over, animated. So we'll click backspace over here, and we will play the animation. You can see it hits the dominoes and knocks them over. Now this in itself is pretty interesting. I mean, it's a nice animation. You can see all the dominoes interacting with each other. We get a little clippage right here. I think if we reset the simulation, it might fix it. Blender does have a few bugs in it. Yeah, it's just because it's hitting the plane at such an angle like that. We can probably fix that if we go over here to the and select uh, we can probably do mesh that might fix it let's go ahead and try that this is just kind of finicky you just kind of got to mess around with it a few times yeah see there we go you can see that fixed it if you're having issues I just select mesh there you go that's our animation we can let that loop now this is pretty nice but I think I want to make it a little bit more interesting if you're happy with this you can stop watching here but I'm just gonna go into a little bit more depth with this and a few more different objects I think I want to add maybe like uh, like a seesaw or something. So we can't just have the animation be this length. So we're going to go down here to the end tab. We're going to make this, I'm going to make it 500 so we can double the length of it. That's the count of frames. We can see that made our uh, animation here a lot longer. Now we need to make it actually simulate longer than 250 frames. So we need to click on this world tab here and go down to, uh, no, this is actually right here, the Scene tab. Go down to Rigid Body World, and we need to click on, um, let's see here, Rigid Body Cache, sorry, right here. We need to click End and make that the same length as our animation, so we'll make that 500 frames as well. So now it'll simulate all the way up to 500 frames and store that in the cache. So now we need to make our plane a little bit bigger to accommodate more objects. So we're going to scale this. We'll click on scale, and we want to scale it in the Y direction. So we'll press Y on the keyboard, and we can scale it, make it a little bit longer. I'll go ahead and move it this way. So now we have a little bit more room to work with here. So now we're going to create a little seesaw that can move back and forth when this domino hits it, or something like that. So we'll go to Add, Mesh. I'm going to go ahead and add a cube. Move this over here. Now we're going to go into edit mode and make this a wedge. So we'll go into edit mode. And we will... I think, uh, yeah, we should be able to go to edge select down here. Select this edge. We can move it in like this. Move them to the center. So there's like a little point on there. So there's that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's what you want. And go to object mode, scale that down. Now we want to create the plank that's going to go across the top. Well, actually, we'll move this first. We'll hit 5 on the keyboard again, and then 3 on the keypad. We'll move that down. So it's sitting on the ground. Then we'll hit 7 on the keypad. We'll move the view just a little bit so we can see the, the dominoes. 
move that right into the center of them right there, maybe over a little bit too. There we go. Now we can hit 5 on the number pad again to go back into our normal view. And this is all positioned correctly. We need to add um, active phys physics to this. So we'll go again, we'll go to rigid body and then leave it as active. Now we need to make the plank that's going to go across the top. So we're going to add mesh uh, cube. Move that over to uh, above this. And we're going to scale this in the, uh, it appears to be the X direction. So we'll hit X on the keyboard. Scale it so it's a little bit thinner. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's about right. And we're going to scale this again in the, now it's the Z direction. So we'll make that like a nice skinny little plank. And we want to make this longer. So we'll scale it now in the Y direction. Make it nice and long. There we go. Now, I, w I think I'm going to add a little groove down here. So when it uh, pivots on here, it doesn't just fall off. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And we're going to use the subdivision surface to create another line right here. We could also use the band cut, but I'm not going to do that, because why not? So we're going to deselect everything and click on face select again. Select this bottom face, and then click subdivide over here, and that's going to create a center line right there. Now if we want to, we can hit it again. This will make it a little bit easier for us. I mean, there's really no set way to do this. You can do it any way you want. I'm going to click on that, and we're going to hold shift on the keyboard and select these. Well, we got to deselect everything first, and we're going to select this, that, that, and that. I'm going to move those over here, and now we're going to deselect everything. I'm going to select these four, move them, oh, oh, we don't want to do that. I'm going to move them, oh, don't want to do that, sorry, messing things up. Make that over there, then we'll deselect everything, hold shift again, make sure you get the right lines, then we'll move them over to there. Now we're going to reselect these and drag this in the Z direction to make a little notch right there. Now we can exit back into object mode. Now we need to set this down on top of the thing, top of the little wedge. So we're going to go back, hit 5 on the number pad again, and then uh, 3 on the number pad. We can pan the view over here to the wedge. And we're going to move this down and line up that little notch. Might need to move a few different things over here just to get everything nice and uh, aligned. I'm going to move that down so it lands right on top of there. Again, we're going to add rigid body to this and leave it as active. Now we're going to hit 7 on the number pad to line it up with the other object with the wedge in this direction. So now when we hit 5 on the number pad again, we can see that hopefully when it simulates, everything works nicely. I think I'm actually going to move both of these over just a little bit so when it falls down on there, it'll do that. Now I want to add something to this side so it kind of, it'll move it maybe? I mean, I'm not really sure what this is going to do. I'm not a physicist or anything, but... I think I'm going to rotate this, actually. I'm going to rotate this in the Z direction by hitting rotate and then hitting Z on the number pad. And then we can do uh, 180 on the number pad. So it flips it around and then move it all this way. So when the domino falls on it, it launches that up. So now we can hit uh, the back arrow here. Play. <laughs> well, yeah, it's simulated. I'll tell you that. Let me uh, actually change the physics on this to mesh again. That'll help it with this little groove right here. The smaller f objects on here don't exactly work well unless you have mesh selected. So we'll hit back on that again. Re-simulate. Yeah, it's kind of finicky. If it starts to do that, really it helps to make everything bigger. You can select this, put the scale up just a bit. And then we'll try to re-simulate this. Yep, this is an issue. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's not perfect, but you do it and get and get into it more, and it, uh, just you just gotta play around with it. 
So there's our simulation. If you want to get into more of the rendering side, I'll do a little bit of that now. I mean, you can watch my tutorial on how to get good renders, and I'll show you how to add materials and everything. I'll just do a little basic one here. I'll make this... Uh, I'll just make this uh, diffuse, give it a grayish tint. Make the world a bright white. I'll give this glass, why not? Make sure you're in there. <laughs> I'll give this a glass. Make it a nice reddish kind of glass with a roughness. And preview that there. I'll make this metal. And I'll make the dominoes all different colors. This might take a little bit. You can skip ahead if you want to. If we go back and play this, it should work pretty nicely. So, we'll let that simulate out. As you can see, this uh, yellow bar is the cache, and that's actually animating as we go, or uh, simulating, I mean, as we go. You'll notice it more when it gets to a little bit more complicated of a render. So there you can see our animation is rendering. Or not rendering, I mean um, simulating. Everything's being uh, put into the cache. So now all that's left to do is position the camera. So if we want to do that, all we have to do is select View Camera. Use this uh, little thing right here. And uh, we're going to click Lock Camera View. And this way we can move the camera around. So we'll get it nice and positioned to where we think it'll look nice in the scene, just like that. And if we want to see a little preview, we can click on Rendered right here. And there we get a little preview of what our scene's going to look like. And then we can mess around with the rendering settings. I'm going to do GPU compute. And I'm going to make this 1080p. I'm going to make it in uh, EVI raw. RGB. Save this to uh, my videos. Um, give me a moment. There we go. And. Um, change the sampling up. I go more into depth with these uh, different settings in my other video which you can check out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. It's good to know about this rendering engine. It's a very nice rendering engine. Like this uh, 28, that's fine. Make this 512. And we can begin to re uh, render our animation. Now, when you click animation, it's not going to show an animation right here. It's just going to show frame by frame, and it will actually progressively save the animation to wherever you're rendering it to. So if we click on that, we can see our frames begin to render. So this is a pretty lengthy process. It'll take, if you're doing it at 128 samples and you're doing a 500 frame uh, video, it'll take probably overnight to render. But uh, as you can see here, with uh, 500, uh, actually with 128 samples, it actually looks pretty nice. Like we get some nice clarity in the images. This is 1080p. It's a good clarity here. Everything looks pretty nice. You can see here, it's now on the second frame of the video out of 500. So it's a pretty lengthy process, but the animations you can get out of it are, are fairly good.
Especially for, what, I spent 10 minutes doing this? Well, yeah, you can kind of tell with that seesaw that flies over. But, yeah. Uh, this is just an introduction. Uh, the physics engine is definitely very versatile and can be used to do many different things. So, if you like my video, make sure to uh, like it, comment if you have any uh, questions. I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching.